ha ho tha ba thu that's so much fun to do that. Why is it fun to do Sandler's, whatever that I know, sound we used to that repeat it always at the office because we walk around and go, ha, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, Sandler, <laughs> uh, one of our favorite persons to interview. He's just such a fun dude and such a good dude and been around Great him stories. for years, mm-hmm. a little bit before SNL. And then since then, uh, been a great pal to me. We've had a good run of just being buds and screwing off and golfing and whatever. And Dana, yeah. uh, he looked up to Dana when we got there. We all did. Everybody likes Adam. He yeah. probably hate to hear that, but he's hard not to just really like. He's a genuinely uh, very sentimental person, super funny, and uh, it was really fun just hanging out with him. And he's got some great stories. He takes his time. So uh, we all really enjoy it. The Sandman. Yeah. And it's live. Can you believe it? So uh, pull over, listen, call in sick at work, and hear mm-hmm. it. This one goes long. Yeah, there's a big old giant audience there giggling at our little throwaways. So it made me a little lighter in my step the next day. All right, Sandu. San, Sandman and Sandu. He, I think he nicknamed me Dana Do, right? Did anyone else call me Dana Do? They called you Do Do. <laughs> well, they call <laughs> you were you were Spudly, right? I was Spudly. They didn't call me Do Do. I'm, I'm sad now. Spudnik, <laughs> and uh, most of those are from Dennis. <laughs> Cheers. But the, the shortest nickname I had was Pew. Uh, was Pew. Spader McDater Potato Tomato Hanger Nader. Right. And I get that a lot. And Sandler just called me Dana Do, but a Farley and Rock always called me the lady because the, the church lady. And Sandler was Dana Do because he did it the other night and I realized he just calls me Dana Do. So then I call him uh, Sand Do and he goes, No, I ain't Sandman. <laughs> 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 anyway, we sing, we laugh, we cry. It's yeah, a really it's fun. fun podcast, so please enjoy it. And uh, they're all great. Let's face it, we don't have any favorites, but we do love Adam. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Hey. Yeah, it's not a fucking thing. It's about but what you gotta do, you gotta get to your seat. Right you gotta seat. get your drink and you gotta get to yeah, the seat. Sit down, it's starting. You gotta get to your seat, you gotta get your drink, you gotta get to your seats. All you right. gotta get to your seats and get your drink. In what order, David? Welcome to the Olsen Twins show. Yes. It's clickbait. What has happened to the Olsen twins? Look at them now. Wow. It's it's a cute fast up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we played here in 1962. You know, it was a shit storm then. Ringo couldn't even keep his beat. People Look, rushing in now. Yeah. Should, this is the show, by the way. I hope you are able to write off your ticket. Yeah. You know, just send it to your account and hopefully you'll get money, a rebate. This guy's got a, a, a laminate and it gets him on all 350 shows from Netflix is a joke this week. So. I know. Netflix is a joke. Here's Joe Biden talking about the festival. Netflix is a joke. No joke. Good night. <laughs> You know, he says no joke all the time when yeah, it's not a they joke. Get it. People not- are dying. I'm not kidding around here. My father died. No joke. We're we can't dying walk now. Him. We can't walk him through every joke. You hey, guys okay. David, we're, there's two of us. We're like the Everly brother. I mean, I'll just be I'm over here now. like this. We could just spread the stage. You go over there. We Look just, at this. I've never been part of a duo. Yeah, it's good. Let's get it going because uh, we got our, our bud here and we want to get things started. Fly so. on the wall. We got a lot of things coming. I'm telling you, many people are saying we got a lot of stuff coming for you tonight. Fly on the wall. That's Trump. Trump with Thank a head you. cold. Thank you. All right. You're let's, tremendous. Let's many get people settled. are saying. Let's settle down. Yeah, we're going to settle in. This and, is our podcast. And yeah. by the way, all joking aside, thanks for coming. I've never done anything like this. And we have our very, 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 very good friend, who we all adore, as our guest, Ow. which is very cool. Look at Ow. this. All right. Okay. I can just do that. All right. This next young man coming to the stage. Yeah. Dana, you can introduce. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very dear friend from Saturday Night Live and about 100 movies, the one and only Adam Sandler. Yay! Woo! 
<laughs> the middleweight champion of the world. <laughs> hey, yo, Rocky, what are you doing? How are you? I, I, I didn't even know it started. We don't. It it hasn't started. It actually. Shit, what nothing. went on so far? Did you guys talk? We talked. I just got used to talking to a crowd. It's been the pandemic thing. Have you been in front of a crowd since the pandemic? Oh, it's the first time. It's going great. Yeah, it's, it's going incredible. Hey, really? You got I, a good I'm, full one tonight. Yeah, you got a mic. You good? You know, so you a just hoodie, I wear in? a hoodie sometimes. It takes about a year <laughs> and a half off my age. I feel. <laughs> I think yeah, it's yeah, smart. Yeah. It's good. Oh, it's so look good. at this. Yo, yo. What's up? The so beard specs. is blocking so I like much, it. too. I like the look. You I could definitely so be on Skid Row and be like, hey, what's up, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I went, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Adam, I have to tell you something. Danny, yeah. you can listen. But I, um, <laughs> this time, today, last time he made me go in the little boy place. Go ahead. <laughs> Actually, today we did a, uh, a uh, hmm. memorial for Norm McDonald today. And yeah. that, was, that was great. We all love Norm. We all work with Norm. Yeah. And um, yep. when there was a break in the action, yeah. uh, uh, it's stupid, but I went to McDonald's just because I had a You son. did? Yeah. What'd you order? What's um, your McDonald's order? That's a great question. Um, then we're going to get to you in a minute, but I want to get to me. <laughs> we, we like to talk about ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I've listened. Good you God. Heard this. <laughs> you I like listening to. You I can't fucking believe how much you talk. I know. No, Adam, it's not that. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about. All right, go ahead. So, All right, back to David. Oh, this shirt, 12 grand. What did you ask me? Anyway, so He's here's rich. The, no, here's yeah. what happened. I went to McDonald's, and I got scared because I went in, yes. and people go, do you actually, they can't believe I go to McDonald's and they can't believe I go in. No one goes in anymore. But I'm man of the people, you know? So I go in and I get filet of fish meal deal. That's okay. By the way, I go, what's your filet of fish of the day? Is it a Branzino? <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> and then, oh, we laugh. And then <laughs> we laugh through the bulletproof glass. And then I cut. So then the, what happened? And then I get six piece McNuggy. Ooh. I don't even know why I'm telling this fucking story about oh. Adam here. But Adam loves this kind of shit. This Love is it. real people stuff. So <laughs> I, I get my nuggets and my hot mustard and I sit down. And I sit down in there. I get yeah. a table and I just want to make some fun because I got to go back. And uh, I'm eating bloop bloop. And naturally, uh, <laughs> there, outside there's someone who's acting a little crazy. At the McDonald's. Yeah, of course. Oh. It just comes with the deal. So he was starting trouble. I'm, I'm like this. Yeah. I'm getting nervous because there's a line of cars and he's banging on the windows. And I go, why the fuck did I come in? Because now I'm trapped. Starts heading toward the door. I go, there's no chance. Bam, door opens. Drenched in sweat. <laughs> and he walks right up to me. He walked and away. He what? walks right it up is... It was Ted Sarandos. No, oh, Ted, it wasn't. No, Ted no. Sarandos. No, it was. Um, <laughs> no, it was just a guy, and and uh, and he was uh, kind of uh, I don't know what was going on, but he's a little crazy. So he goes, "Hey man, it, the story keeps fucking what? going." I okay. know, but you guys we're, are interrupting. We're gonna take a short break. Anyway, Jeez. he goes, "Get me some money for some food." And I go, "All right," and he's just talking to me. So I go, "Okay," and I give him ten bucks, and then he goes, "Give me, give me your McNuggets." <laughs> oh. That's fucking nuts. And he's dropping sweat on. He's like, <laughs> and I go like this. But I know I don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to argue that he's going to kill me. So yeah. he goes, I go, I'll give you one. What? <laughs> I gave him one. This is a fucking. Bit. I swear to God, today, and I gave you worked him this out of the Chris store. Rock did this bit. <laughs> I'll give you one nugget. <laughs> give me one rib. Rich Schneider. I gave him a goddamn <laughs> nugget. It? Chris Rock. Oh, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock has that button. Anyway, this is a newer version of that. And then he goes, <laughs> give me another one. And I oh, gave him two. Geez. And then I go, that's it. Did I gave you 10 bucks. Did he dip it in sauce? Did he dip he didn't it in want sauce? Sauce. I wasn't going to let him. He goes, I'll just dip it in sweat. Boop, boop. <laughs> so he had two. And then I go, just go buy some. And the people at the cashier's room were waving me off like, don't send him over here. And so he went over there. And then I just, I got up and left because I got scared. But that's all. Adam, our guest let's tonight. let's bring that guy out right now. Oh, come Excellent. on. <laughs> hey. Nugget man. You know, Daryl. Let's look at a clip. You met a crazy man in a McDonald's. That's pretty good, though, Dave. Anyway. Adam, remember, the, remember the crazy man you saw your first day in New York? 
Oh, you, you, you what did I say? Well, you saw a man masturbating oh. in the park? Yeah, we thought, yeah, he was masturbating in the park. <laughs> and we're walking by. We just got to Manhattan. We're like, hey, let's go to the walk in the park. And he's masturbating. We're kind of trying not to look. And he goes, hey, have you got the time? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's jacking off on a car bench, but he's really worried. And a park bench, sorry. Anyway, uh, yes, Adam. I don't. You I have remember a memory like days. a steel trap. I loved it. I we loved had it. some fucking crazy me, times. Me and you Woo. together was the best. We, when David would come by, we'd be like, "All right, we gotta listen no, for a while." No, no, no. He'd have a McDonald's, or remember the Jack of the Box story? It was like exactly. twenty minutes, but it was great. <laughs> But we, uh, yeah, we had some crazy, we had yeah. that one crazy gig where we got lost. Yes. Me and Remember that? Dana went on a great gig. I opened for you. You were the yeah. king. And you let me do 10 minutes before you. It was upstate New York and yes. there was no cell phones and we started getting lost. And we just realized, wow, we're really, really lost. So we yes. showed up like four hours late. Yes. And the students were just sitting up in a gym like this, dead silence, like oh, a yeah. church. Yeah, they were pissed, right? So I go get a, go get them, Adam. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sent me out there. Did you have your guitar with you? No, I, I wasn't gu guitaring then, but I just, Cajun Man just started. Oh. It was Cajun Man, so I said, on your own. And they, <laughs> and they gave me some sort of noise, and I was like, okay, this is a new <laughs> life I got, man. Fucking on your Cajun life. Man. On your own. own. But I did 10, 15 minutes. I did fine. Yeah, you did You fine. said I did great, but I probably did fine. But then you went up and... Annihilated. I don't remember it that yes. way. Yes. I thought we both had Was a Was your set, set eight minutes of Cajun Man? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime something didn't work, I'd go, funny <laughs> <laughs> And what? we got we ate Cajun afterwards. We found a place in the Pocono Mountains or something, right? Yeah, we 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 tipped back a few, drove back. Oh, and no, we went crazy in the car, let's yeah. admit it. On the yeah. way back, Adam and I just got a case of the fuckets, and the car was full of beer. Yeah. And we started drinking it, yes. and, and then you brought out cigars or somewhere. Something we had like cigars, yeah. so we're drinking beer and having cigars and playing Rod, Rod Stewart, Stewart <laughs> for like hours. Oh, like you and we went remember. crazy, and we ran out of beer, and then we went to a liquor store. But oh. you were with me, and you looked 15 at the time. Hey, that's right. I had an ID, but he goes, "I'm not selling it to you because of him." And he pointed at you, <laughs> and then we got him on. I the said to him, "Remember, I said on your own." He goes, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> Usually that worked. They would just hand us a six pack. <laughs> <on your own. laughs> anyway, Alcohol is on. We went, yes. cra we went yeah. crazy with those. So were... when, let's get to when Adam started stand up because you started before me, but you were in New Hampshire. Yeah. I did start before you? I, uh, I think, okay. no, no, maybe it's about the same time. I, yeah. was, I started when I was like 18 and a half. And yeah. then you, what, what how old were you? I was 17. Oh, you, when you eight, started stand up, where did where yeah, you I, go I on? Went on? I went on senior year in high school. My, my brother. Yeah told me, uh, and my brother was going to Boston University, and then he said, remember I told you, oh, somebody went to Boston University here? No? Hey! They're like, whatever you want, Adam. Well, That's a sure. good, <laughs> it's a good school, congratulations. Um, but anyways, my brother, we were at dinner, and he said, uh, hey, I got you that lottery ticket. I told you, remember you had to wait online and get a mm -hmm. ticket to go on stage? And I said, oh, oh yeah. my God. You got that? And because he mentioned it a couple of months earlier, and then I went, I, he said, it's tonight. So I put on a dress shirt. I remember I had a nice dress shirt with stripes. I folded. I didn't know how to button this. I was never yeah. good at buttoning my own. Oh, right. This, here, yeah. right here. So I rolled it up like spade right there. Yeah. And then I. Because I still don't know how to do it. Is, I don't know. Is that <laughs> yeah. happening still? When it's I do it's funny that look. what you would think to wear the first time, because I wore, a, I wore a, a, a shirt and a tie. The first time you went yeah. on, really? That's nice. Because I wanted to look, also I wanted to look older. I looked very young and I, yeah. and I had to go to a real bar to do it. And the age was 19 in Arizona. So, What, but, what was the bar? Uh, there's one called Chuckles and then Anderson's Fit the State. Chuckles? Mm -hmm. I know they all have goofy names, Gut Busters. Was that in Scottsdale? <laughs> the, the Looney Bin. Oh. Yeah, Chuckles was the first place um, I went on. And uh, I mean, to stop your story. So you, but where could you go on a bar when you're that young? I went on at a place called Stitches Comedy Club. See, Stitches. Stitches in Boston. You're 17. 17. When no, I was no one gave a fuck. It's so funny. They let anyone go on young. I, I didn't even know what to talk about. I was driving down with my brother and he said, did you write anything? And I said, no, no, no. I was, <laughs> I'll wing it, you man. Everything's funny. Gonna, hey, I'm, I'm, your yeah, brother I'm, was like your manager. Yeah, he 100% <laughs> was just guy I'm going, you got to do something with your life. And so I, <laughs> we, there's nothing else you could do. You really can handle nothing. So, um, 
I went on, <laughs> I went on, I did the five minutes. I had a retainer because uh, I was still young and I remember just total silence. I was saying stuff that, you know, that I thought they would love, that my family's loved for years and they were just going. And then I remember hearing one guy go, he's got a retainer. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, <laughs> smiling. And, uh, Dana, do you remember any of your jokes? Didn't say anything that made sense. There's nothing to remember. I don't even know all. what happened. I used to get that blank mind, like yeah. I, the first two years, three years of comedy, I all day long I'd be practicing and all the shit written down and like I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, then that, then this, and then I'd get yeah. on stage and I'd be like, Well, I fucking hate it here. Why am I here right now? Yeah. Space out. You guys space out, I'm yeah. sure. Back well, in the blank day. out all the time. Terrifying. I would be nervous all day long. Just adrenalized, sweating, right. just yes. just a bright red neck, terrified, <laughs> pacing. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because yeah. this is while I was sleeping. No, my point is this. <laughs> no, it was uh, stage fright. I mean, you had just basic. 100%. By the time, well, I don't want to go forward, but by the time you got on SNL, it seemed like you had a yeah. lot, of, a lot of confidence pretty quickly then. I don't know how, but yes. I'm just curious about a little bit about early Adam, just for a second. Yeah, yeah. You guys are curious about what made Adam sound like. I just, I mean, I you do. know, whatever you want to. I just, I do this sometimes with our guests. Just, you know, a favorite toy or a favorite bike mm. or your first guitar. Mm -hmm. What oh. would you have memories about any I, of those? All, all of those. I okay, favorite, favorite toy. Favorite toy was uh, probably the uh, fucking Evil Knievel. Oh Pull yeah, SSP. Evil yeah, yeah, Knievel. SSP, don't. making a I jump. Yeah. So you wind it up Twi and pull it. You'd and create would... your own little jump. You'd put pillows and cardboard and fucking Evil Knievel would fly off of that. That was fun. I would scratch my mother's tile. She would yell at, <laughs> yell at me for that. Uh, what was the second one you said? You're a, a bike. I had a... Bike. Stingrays were big when Stingray. I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. you have a bike that was a big chariot for you? Mongoose. I had a mongoose. A mongoose? I had a mono shock. I used to do jumps. <laughs> it was a little, it was very daredevil-y. I'd love yeah. to see you doing jumps. That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Now he is. I do a little cross up, me. tabletop. Don't worry about it. But oh, I also had the Evil Knievel. That Evil Knievel thing was really good on the commercials about jumps. Yes. And then in person, it's in fucking impossible it to make do anything. the wall yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just go over and fall. Uh, but when did you get, when did you be, mu when were you musical? Can I tell them about my fucking bicycle? No. <laughs> I'm fucking so, uh, hey, we're new to this. Yeah, he's going to hear from me right now. What are you right moving after? on from my bicycle? You took over the whole bike thing. Uh, no, I thought it was. I had, I'm this hurts. Kind of bail you. We're learning. We're learning yeah, tonight, yeah. which is great. Dana, you're fantastic. Thank Shut you. <laughs> but it's not true. But David, no. Yeah. So I had, I always wanted a Huffy. I wanted a Huffy like everybody else. Now tell me about a Huffy, because that's... Huffy has like the, a longer the, the seat. long seat, so it was like a Stingray. Like a Stingray. Stingrays yeah. got... They'd have a banana seat, they banana call it. Banana seat, right. So the friend could ride in the back. Yes, yeah. yes. A Huffy, a Huffy I had more of a cushiony seat. More. Yes. Than, it was like a banana, but a little thicker for like dirt riding, right? Like mm. if you ride... Oh, ah, ah, ah. Was it sold at Sears? Was it from <laughs> Sears? Well, here's the problem with the Adam Sandler Huffy. So I said to my family, I'd like a Huffy. Of course, I didn't get the Huffy. I got something else, a green bike. They took the seat off. My father bought a, a Huffy seat uh, and put it on the, fucking, <laughs> on the bike. <laughs> and I would go down to Webster School, the, the, my elementary school, and everyone's popping wheelies and on their Huffies. And I showed up with my Huffy seat and the green bike. And I was like, hey. And they were like, get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> Fake coffee shit. Fake so, shit. Was that a budgetary thing or teaching a lesson for your, for your dad? There was a time when my dad, I, he didn't tell us he was so cool. Yeah. He didn't have a, a job for like a year and a half. And I wow. remember I, he just kept it from us. I'd be like, dad's always fucking home. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but I would ask him. I'd still ask for shit. I'd be like, I saw this thing on TV. Let's go. Oh, Give me yeah, that. Let's go. And he was like, eh, yeah, we'll get to that. And I was like, we'll get to that. What the yeah. fuck is happening? Wow. So it was out of love out of when love. he did the Huffy scene. But I think he, yeah, he, he had to kind of build that fake Huffy for me. Were you a daredevil at all? Did you get hurt as a kid? Did as you fall kid, off things, break things? I mean, I was definitely tougher as a kid. I was more fearless as a kid. Now, I was a good skier. I was oh, a good skier. In New Hampshire. New Hampshire yeah. skier, yeah. So yeah. We, we skied all the time. You, Dana? 
You ski? No, it was for rich people. <laughs> <laughs> we would have a little, uh, we'd have a little inner tube. We'd go to yeah. like, you know, right, right. snowball and you know, just go down like that. But the big people up there could pay the money to go up the thing. No, so. there was no money. We had Huffy skis. They were fake. <laughs> but in New Hampshire, your mountains were like 300 feet, right? Two we were in Northern California. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how did you get hurt a lot? Did you just oh, fall down? I, do, I used to, I was pretty good. I used to do, back in the day, you did a helicopter. Uh, on oh yeah, skis. on the skis, you and could that do was that? like a big deal. Jesus, now man. it's fucking. I don't even think anyone does a helicopter anymore, right? right. That you look at, no, you never see these guys on, on TV pop pop out a helicopter. They're always doing those flips and shit. Well, they could do anything they want. It's a, it's a, it's, unbelievable it's insane now. Olympics so cool. now. It doesn't even make sense. There was one guy in my hometown, uh, Robitaille, his last name, uh, hmm. Jay Robitaille. He used to do flips. He fucking was at this place, McIntyre. It was a little. Uh, ski area in my hometown they'd build uh, a jump for this guy and no one else could do it but he would just come down knock out a flip everybody like what the fuck yeah well, wait a minute, a real Adam, you, you, be on, you go down, and then you go up. He leans and then, forward, and then he gets would, in the air, he leans forward, does a full flip. Oh, a front lands, flip? Front flip. Oh, fuck. But like, you would go harder. like a complete I would do that. 360. I could do it. Yeah, and then land too. your skis. And then land, yeah, it was cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I was very good when I was like tw- up to 15, and then I started getting scared. Okay. Not being as cool. So then when did the guitar come in? Like, I got a drum set... Uh, yes. 14. When did you get a guitar? Yeah, and you're great on drums. We had some good jams back We had in the, some good jams, the too. The best, yeah. yes. Uh, my guitar happened, my dad had an acoustic. Okay. So he used to play, he'd always sing Mariah, the uh, Away Out West, yes. they got a, right? For wind and smoke and fire, and they called the and they called the wind Mariah. So thank you. You didn't know that one? Do you guys know I that did. one? I did. I knew when to be quiet. <laughs> you beat me down so much, I didn't join in. Oh. Even though I have the voice of an angel. So I, you got it. <laughs> Well, we'll get David in on the Yeah, get in on, on, on the rest. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Favorite, favorite entertainment that you saw as a for, in your formative years? I say 5 to 13. Like TV show or movie that fucking blew your mind? Sing or a comedian? Blew my fucking mind. Wild, Wild West? <laughs> no, you're too young. I like that. Yeah? I like, um, my f- favorite thing, I think, the thing that knocked me out when I was... Yeah, I love movies. I love all the comedies. Like, well, I'm sure every buddy yeah. up here you know the mel brooks and all that stuff you know yeah young frankenstein and silent yeah. movie and blazing, blazing saddles. saddles and all that stuff got me but Crazy. i'll tell you what really got me i th- look back at it i think i was in florida or florida as you would say david <laughs> uh, but i was in florida <laughs> florida and uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah my parents took me to see uh, Eddie Fisher, he sang. Oh, Eddie Fisher, and somebody went on before him. Oh, uh, from from uh, Singing in the Rain, Donald O'Connor. Donald O'Connor, Eddie Fisher, and they came out and did. Eddie Fisher closed the show. I, Donald O'Connor tap dance, and I was sitting. My parents going, "Holy shit! That one guy, you go on stage, you can do that kind of thing." And I got it, kind of like wanted to get into that. Uh, that's interesting. That's that sort of turned you on just the performing. Like they didn't know if you'd even like it, and then you really liked it. I, I guess so. I mean, I don't think I, they were trying to talk me into it. They were just trying to have a nice night out in yeah. Florida, and then I was just kind of locked into. I used to sing a lot in the car. I used to sing a lot. My mother always said I sang good. My father would just stare like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would you sing? You remember just songs off the radio? Oh my god, it was a pain in the ass because. I, sh- I sang a lot of Johnny Mathis for my mother. Oh, really? She'd, o- she'd always sing Chances Are. And I'd be like, Chances Are, because I wear a silly grin. Whatever I did, you and know. I yeah. was and it was so fine, not great. Chances Are. You <laughs> I, saved, I saw, used to see him. Yeah, yeah. The big vibrato. And yeah, then you um, had the pipes. I, I sang, uh, I sang, oh, Maria from West Side Story. I sang, this is when I was little, you know, like 10. And uh, but my mother always said I had a good voice, and my father was like, "He's all right." And uh, <laughs> didn't your mom, who was such a cheerleader, that if Sinatra came on, she would say, "You're better." Oh yeah, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
supportive uh, mom. Oh, you know what's funny? My mother, speaking of that, my uncle worked at a, uh, at a clothing company. And when I went to NYU, I, I was a stand-up. There you go. And, uh, and I, went to, go. I, did, I was a stand-up. I was making no money uh, like all of us. And um, my mother called my uncle and said, can Adam model for you? And, uh, <laughs> and my uncle was like, you know, I'll talk to them. Uh, and, <laughs> and she's like, he really needs the work. Help Modeling. him model. And I'm like, really? I'm a model? She's like, you're gorgeous. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then my I uncle. Her mom. <laughs> she, you're wonderful. And then my uncle had to just go, he fucking looks terrible in a suit. <laughs> He's not great. There's not a good angle on him. Uh, <laughs> you own a suit now, don't you? What? You own a suit now. I, I actually, because of the, my daughter's bat mitzvah, I, oh, ha- yeah. I had to get the fucking suit dry clean this morning. <laughs> I don't think it's going to fit either. I've been swelling up. <laughs> no. What can you do? All right, so. Go ahead, Dana. You had so many questions. I, I know. Well. <laughs> Then, then you go to NYU. <laughs> <laughs> There's the so, That's yeah. your hero, Adam. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, this is we're, uh, the, we're kind of up in that area. Uh, yeah. Toy, bike. <laughs> no, I got to have a road map. This is good, man. Uh, Wilt yeah. Stud Boy. The Stud Boy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wilt Joke. Now, Chris yeah. Rock called that one of the best pure jokes ever written. Thank uh, you, Chris. And that yeah. was early yeah. stand-up. Yeah, yes. I that mean, David, good. you want to... Because I'm just thinking of Adam grows up, he goes to NYU, and then yeah. he's in New York, he's 17. Yes. Within six years, you're on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened in those six years, David? Oh, uh, well, Adam <laughs> was a great stand-up, had a very unique perspective, interesting <laughs> delivery, good, memorable joke. It was more like one joke, yeah, one yeah, joke, like, right, one like, joke, right? Like yeah, yeah, not really stories. It was right. kind of like that. And... I wasn't even, you know, we didn't have YouTube, all that shit. So I didn't know you till I actually physically saw you. Yeah. Was Oh, that was in the Valley. It was at the Improv and the, and the, the Valley, Valley Improv. improv. We you ever go to the Valley Improv, Dana? Did you ever do that? Dana? Oh, yeah, I did that yeah. when I was living in New York in 1981, doing a sitcom with Nathan Lane and Mickey Rooney. Wow. I worked a, yeah, one of the boys. You check it out. Um, <laughs> and it was Scatman Carruthers as well. But you, you um, like, Jack Terabuto told me once that, he was your, you know, your yeah, he partner for a dorm, long time, yeah. and he knew you back then. You would just do a bit. You'd go to a club, wouldn't yeah. quite work, yeah. and then you keep going and going. Then he'd come back like a week later, and you had it killing. So you, yeah. you were very tenacious about yes. it, right? Yes, I, I don't know why. I was not. I was probably the same as as you guys. You you just, I don't know. I believed in it. I kept doing it. Found a way to kind of phrase it right. Do it till it works, or you do you ever take? I used to tape mine, then it was very excruciating to listen to your own voice. But yeah. you would think you killed, and it was really just one person laughing loud. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. you think it was nothing, but then you said something you forgot in between the jokes that was good. So right. you'd sort of like piece it together and then try it again and tape it. And sure. Yeah, I yeah. did the old, I did the same thing you do where you pulled out of a hat, but it was more sickening because I drove off from Arizona and then they'd have at the improv amateur night. And yeah. so I'd sit there and they'd pull a name and read it and you'd come up. So we're all waiting. Yeah. And every time they pull it, you get nervous and yeah. it's not you. And I go, oh. And, and then, you, you almost don't want it to be you sometimes. So you're like, oh, good. They're not going to get to it. Right. Me. Then it was tough. And yeah, then by the end so of the night, I'm yeah, like, scared. I don't even need it now. It was, and then I never, it never worked that way. And I think it was rigged. I think they knew who was going up. They had friends of friends. But uh, I finally got, got a few things. But then we wound up running to each other. How did you do your first night? I how did I do? Yeah. First night of stand up? Yeah. That's a good question. Um <laughs> when I started stand up <laughs> I take the mic off. <laughs> Can I get you anything out of <laughs> no. No, no, it's a, it's actually any, I just remember first time as a we good were story. spoiled because when I got to uh Saturday Night Live, or I was in the valley and I was seeing comics, I was seeing guys like Drake Sailor who's great. I saw Adam was great. Schneider was funny. Yeah, he and, was great. Uh, I, I was just wound up seeing guys that, in a million years, how would we all get on SNL? It was so weird that, that it would happen big. that way. When you came in, it was like a firestorm. But you guys really, you kind of like had 20 minutes, right? 
You weren't headlining oh, no, yeah. on the road. You had a Middle, great right. 20. Pretty, and pretty then SNL 20, yeah. people saw you in the clubs. That's right. And they liked your writing. You got hired as a yes. writer. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. De yeah. Dennis, Dennis hooked me up. Dennis, Dennis Miller. Miller. So Dennis Miller. Dennis was the one who saw you. That's true. Uh, yeah. Dennis Miller saw me a few times at the Santa Monica Improv. Oh, and he yeah. waited in the back after he. I think you guys knew each other already. I knew Dan. He was my oh, favorite yeah, comic back then. You Dennis. probably introduced us then. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he watched me and he and he said he, he liked some of my jokes and he was he was so nice to me and we we loved him and we idolized him and uh, he he heard they were looking for Lauren was looking at new people and he said you should check out the Sandman and, yeah. and Sandingo I, yeah he gave you that moniker. <laughs> yeah, because the dentist never he always has a name for something. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Okay, yeah, no, six, you know, Sandman hitting it heavy down at the prov <laughs> in Santa Monica, okay? Tearing up the beach communities with his wilt the stilt humor. Okay? Sorry. Yeah. I love being Dennis. I love yeah, being in that good. attitude. But um, thank you. So <laughs> What was your, do you remember your first bit that kind of became your, your, uh, your rock? Like, even if the, sh the yeah. set was not going well, you uh, had one that started closer. to work. Yes, I had one that, mm, I don't, I, I said, uh, Vicks Vaporub. I used to say, <laughs> remember Vicks Vaporub? Uh, when your mother would rub it on your chest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and my mother would be rubbing it on my chest, and then we make eye contact. And I was like... <laughs> I thought we were just friends, Ma. That was that was like my that was a great one. That was my big guarantee they, back then. Did you ever say was, this one when you go? Uh, I remember that joke very well. I thought that yeah. was a great one. And he said, "When I was uh, people say if you could live your life over, would you would you change anything?" You go, "Yeah." Uh, when I was walking down the when I fell down the stairs, I might have grabbed the rail next time. Oh yeah, was that that's something right. like that? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Oh. Jeez, I forgot that. I mean, there's oh, wow. obviously Wilt Chamberlain, but you had so many good jokes, and they were so. Different and odd, and then uh, and then Dennis got you on. Yeah, Dennis. But it's good Dennis. to be different. It's very hard to be different. And so when you see when I did it, when I auditioned that night, it was with Rock, uh, Dana Gould, and and uh, three other good comedians. Where and were you? I was Chicago? in Chicago. Flew oh, to that's Chicago. Right. Rock was Chicago. That's Rock right. did great. I did fine. Dana Gould destroyed. Great God comment. damn, that's yeah. a with me he too. He was incredible. So. Yeah. He he should have got it. He's I don't great. Know why he, he he wrote for the sim? He did a lot of great stuff, but somehow I, I got hired as a writer like David did, and then yeah. be David and Schneider, me, and who else was a writer? Anybody else? Just us three? Uh, me? And, oh yeah, because Farley and Rock got hired that year, and they were uh, just straight. They were on feature they, they were or feature customers. Players. Yeah. Uh, everybody wrote for themselves, like Dana wrote, but Dana was never credited as a writer. If yeah. you got, if you got on as a main player, you never got a writer's credit for some reason. But right, that's whatever, right. it's just part of the deal. That was yeah. good sneaky money, though. I didn't want to be a writer, but you know, we didn't make much money, but you'd get kicked a rerun uh, in perpetuity, and that was nice, even though it was two cents. But it was nice to uh, you get a you get a stack of checks, and it's the host, so it's like. 18 cents, Alec Baldwin, 18 cents, Tom Hank, Glenn Close. So that was kind of fun to rack that up, the bricks. You've and invested then, wisely. Yeah, invested wisely. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, but we didn't make a ton. I'm sure when you started, you didn't make, we didn't make shit. I, I don't think we even, we couldn't believe we were getting paid, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It was just yeah, a big cares? deal to be, get money. Just when, maybe, t yeah, like you net, like maybe 20 grand for the whole season or oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. live in a hovel. Yeah, it was really. I was, but, you know, I, there I was with Phil, late great Phil, and Jen, Jen yeah. Hooks, God yeah. bless him. Yes. And Phil, Mike Myers. Yeah. And yeah. love it. And the yeah. show was really cooking. And yeah. then you guys came off like the mothership in Close Encounters, you know. <laughs> Here comes Rock <laughs> and yeah. Sandler. And I remember the f first time I saw you in the office. You were just kind of sitting at the big table on 17th floor, Saturday Night oh, yeah. Live. And I was doing pretty well on the show, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I liked you immediately. You just, you just had this vibe about you that was yeah. really, really funny oh, that's and, and, and likable, you know, and that's a big well, part of the you DNA. You sense, sense the, that, uh, the love we all had. Dana was the, the king. Dana, I'll tell you, remember, it was almost like at a stand-up club. If Dana had a, a skit and your skit was going on after, you were just like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, because oh, Dana was on, yeah. so hard. You got to follow Church Lady or something. Yeah, Are church, you talking about read through or, or read through? The show? Uh, read, read through is bad. But on the air, on yeah. the air was the biggest explosion in the place. And then 
your skit would do fine, but in your weird comedy brain, you're just like, how the fuck do I get those Dana laughs? Yeah. Well, I had a lot of help. You know, make a talk show, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. have Phil Hartman and Jan Hooks come on. Yeah, a lot, yeah, you know, yeah. crazy was... thing stuff. But um, <laughs> so, so you come on, you get on the show, you're like, what's your first big? Uh, what was your first? You probably did update first, right? Or did you write Racky Pete or something? No, that was uh, uh, Al Franken wrote that. Yeah. Book. Aren't you supposed to do the noise now? You do that. All right. But um, I, I, I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh-oh. So, like in classic comedy. <laughs> sorry, David, you weren't finished. Sorry. You're going to like this one. The, because, you know, you didn't really lean on it much. But in the beginning, I remember in the classic comic sense of the idiot. So, like, yeah. there's Jerry Lewis is like the king. Yeah. And then I remember you would do the hunched over guy. Uh-huh. And he would do that sound. Oh, like, oh, yeah, where, yeah. where did that guy come from? Because that instantly made me laugh so hard because you were so committed. What was yes. that? Oh, yes. oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know, man. Uh, it's very musical. It so can felt, you do more? It always felt good in a microphone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even I don't even know if that ever got on the air, if I ever did that. I, don't, I just remember seeing that and really loving it, you know. But yeah. there, there's one character I want to break down, unless David has a question. Because I'm fa- <laughs> sure. Go ahead. <laughs> We're really close friends. Um, the <laughs> opera man, the evolution yes. of opera man, yes. man, that then became the indestructible killer bit of all time. By the time you got it on yeah. the update desk, yes, with the pictures, and you were mixing great wig. So, good way, Adam, good I'll luck. let you fit, but t- talk about the origins of that and the way uh, you did it and then the way you ended up doing it. It evolved, gotcha. right? Gotcha, yes, it okay, did. Go ahead. Right. Yes. That's my question. Thank you, yeah, that's a good question. And I remember you, were, you knew the guy, so there was a man on the street who used to sing opera on the street. He used to hold the can up and you'd be walking down the street and he'd kind of come at you and go, hey, and he'd sing really hot <laughs> and, he, and he'd charge you, hey, <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, and you give him money. I and, didn't know that. Yeah, that's kind of where I first started doing oh, it around I the office. I love that. I didn't know that. I met that guy today at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't singing, though. He's in between sets. Adam, <laughs> what, would a guy, what would a guy like that be ordering like a McDonald's? Yeah, How would yeah, he what sound? Did he order? Yeah. <laughs> Barbecue sauce. The, yeah. the, the thing that you can sound exactly opera is one more gift on SNL. If you can have a voice, if they'd write a, a singing sketch, obviously Adam wrote a lot of his own, but if they'd write somewhere you sing, you can get in. If you can play an instrument, you can get in. There's so many things if you can do dance. So if you do, I didn't do a lot of those things, which was a, kind of a drag, but Adam can sing so well and, and actually write songs and actually write songs that are catchy because a lot of those things you don't update were actually really catchy on top of so, just being funny. Yeah. And so that combo is big. And that opera man was a fucking cruncher. That always That killed. was a gift from Didn't the Didn't you Turners. do it off in, on the stage next nice. update initially? Yeah, no, I, first time I did it, it was oh. just gibberish. It was like, it was <laughs> a Sometimes. theater thing. And I think maybe you, or was it Phil? That's what I remember. I don't know if I like, remember this maybe right. Maybe you, maybe you. But you I was like, in my office. And yes, Adam, that's it. That's Adam it. used to go around the office. <laughs> On all floors. <laughs> so then I hear a little knock, and I'm in my office. So I open it up, and you're on all floors. You go, oh. And then you, just, you were asking me to do something, introduce yes, Opera Man, right? You were the man. So I That's did remember right. that. So you were like a theater guy, who would say, yeah. tonight the Opera Man. Yeah. Well, something like, yeah. goes from the emotion of, you know, like trying yes. to catch the bus. But unfortunately, he misses the bus. <laughs> but then he sees his mother, you know, is behind the bus yes. and picks him up. Let's watch the opera man. <laughs> okay. Or and something so that like that. And I'd, and I'd yes. walk. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd see my mother. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. And that was it. And it did good. It did good at it the table. It did good. Yeah. You know, Sandler, it's good but if you... A trick on SNL is if, if Adam was probably slightly newer then, but if you anchor it with Dana, who they love. Oh, right. And yeah. then he brings yes. you on, then they go, hey, Dana seems to like it. <laughs> and, they, and then they start to, to like help. the new guy. It helps, helps you. Help. When you're new, it helps. Yes. 
No, it, it was a Dana's the best at it, so that's what it was. But yeah. any, anyways, uh, it did fine. I, it was up at the table. It did well. Everybody, remember, after a while, they started liking us at the table. When David and I first yeah. were on us and um, and at the table, and we try to get on and we do full skits for ourselves. Everybody else was kind of like, calm down. That's enough, guys. Yeah, that's enough. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then by uh, uh, this time, they were like, all right, g- give him a shot. And then we did that, and it didn't do great, so Lauren didn't put it on. But then the Turners, out of nowhere, Bonnie and Terry Turner. Great writers. Great writers. They wrote for the show for great. eight, nine years. Wayne's yeah. World. They, Wayne's they, World. They, they, you they, and Mike. Yeah, Tom, they, were, uh, they wrote the first Tommy Boy draft, too. What's that? Mm-hmm. They wrote the first draft of Tommy Boy. They wrote, that's right. Yeah. Tommy yeah. Boy, that's right. They were they were monsters. I don't even know why we don't hear about talk about them more. They had some huge sketches. You guys should have them on this show. Be, yeah, I'd love it. We'd love to. Yeah, they're great. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Terry. In case Hello, they're guys. Listening to this when it's released. But they wrote what? What we and said. And Lindsay and Lindsay, their daughter. Their daughter Lindsay. Yeah. Yes. And but uh, but anyways, they wrote this thing and they talked to me. I was in my office. They were like. So remember that opera man thing you did? We came up with an idea for the news and they showed it to me and I'm so, uh, I was just so dumb and young and whatever I was. And I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess we could try it that it way. Was, it was opera man on the news that you said? Opera man on the, news, the news. Showing, showing current oh, events and then, you and then me singing it, about you sing it. Him and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't really... I what was a, like, no, Opera Man speaks gibberish, and that doesn't make any you sense. You don't understand Opera Man. <laughs> <laughs> so then it became a divorce. Oh, how would it, you know? You oh, would do yeah, current events with like Trumpo, Trumpo. And, yeah, yeah, exactly, and exactly. It just crushed. That was all. Those guys wrote it. I got to be it. They would give me the melodies, mm-hmm. and Cheryl would would write oh, yeah, Cheryl Hardwick, yeah, and and they it would was, just give me all the goods and. I mean, it was the greatest gift ever. That yeah, was a home run. Got to wear the. the Did you do it with Eddie, Mo- Eddie Vedder or not? You, so you sing like Eddie Vedder once you go. I, I, I sang like Eddie. Was it Vedder as once. Opera Man or was it something Opera else? Opera Man singing about uh, Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, yeah. And remember, remember when I think they were even on the show Pearl Jam that night. Yeah, oh, that's right. But so anyways, what would he say? A vetter? What do you know? I mean, you was, got the was, pipes, kid. You no, still he got, got the, you were going, I, hey, I'm saying, well, I'm out of made of concrete. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you sound exactly like him. Eber, I, I can't do it now. I know any better. It, 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 he's, it's a his, certain thing a, he does. Thi- he's got a thicker, lower voice. Oh, than his any voice of us is unreal. It's, yeah, mm. it's a juicy voice. We, we share an office, me and uh, Farley, and then you walk through our office to get to uh, Adam and Chris Rock. So when the door was closed, I'd hear, ho, 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 hey. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, he's got a killer cooking in there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's in the oven. We yeah. all have got excited when we landed on a good impression. But um, I did one with Lovitz, an opera man yes. with Lovitz. Yes. That was, oh, that, that was, was a great awesome. one. He can sing great. And that was a perfect, only other guy who could do it besides you because oh, he's got man. pipes and yes. he's, he's just a funny. So that was a killer. That was amazing. He played your brother or something? I, it was Glenn Close and and, uh, and Lovis, and maybe they were my parents. I don't remember. Yeah, but yeah. I remember they came, <laughs> they came <laughs> they on so and with me. <laughs> only on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's right. Can we? I, I'd like. I, I could go anywhere. It's so much fun. I want to ask about when he does bits. When he, you get to bring in one of the musical stars. I think McCartney did Red Hood and Sweatshirt. With you. Oh, that was the great. God oh, damn! Farley so did jealous. something with him. You did something yes. with him. Yes. I, I love left McCartney, just right yeah. before McCartney hosted. You you weren't there then. Oh, I wait. missed. Wow. I missed it. I was a fool. You know, he was upset. You know, because we'd met at eighty six and Lor- at Lauren's house. He called me up. He said, I don't know why you didn't stick around, and you know. <laughs> We could have had a plonker. We'd be plonking, looking at each other. I go, who is this? Nobody in Bolton. No. He's uh, cranking. I, I miss that, but you, you got to do a, a thing. What did it, you do with Paul McCartney? It was, it was Red Oated Sweatshirt. I wrote it uh, with Ian Maxtone Graham and I forget who else, somebody else. And we. Um, and we had dip, you know, I had dip, 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 and dip, 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 dip. Bah, 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 and stuff like yeah. that. I say it. And then as it progressed, Kevin. Maybe Kevin Nealon did it with me. And then I said, uh, let's call out Paul and Linda. And, and Paul and Linda McCartney, uh, we wrote it for him. And then Lauren said, I said, will they do it? He goes, well, you have to talk to them. And 
So I went to Lauren's office. I, they were eating. I think they were on the show, or they were just visiting. They were. They were. Paul was the guest. Okay. And Linda was with so them. You walk in and you have to convince them. I just <laughs> like had to come in with the dopey guitar and be like, yeah. Hi, my heart's pounding <laughs> no. through my chest. Did you crawl in or did you walk? Uh, <laughs> me. Hey, I was oh, <laughs> skip. Or so, there was a, that was when you were going to pitch it. Remember, you'd skip across. No, I'm making that up. Sorry. Go ahead. So you walk in there. I mean, I well, Lauren's eating Shun Lee, Chinese, Shun Lee, I and, love uh, it. and Paul and Linda. There, and Linda's amazingly nice, and Paul's amazingly nice. And I sing them the little thing, and um, and they laughed. And uh, then I left. And then I was like, I, I don't know if that worked or not. But then they said yes, and they. Forever, I got that. I sang with them, hung out with them after the show. Hung out. Stella was there. Remember, Stella was a kid. She came to the oh, show. Stella, Stella right? McCartney, the fashion designer. Yes, and she was such a nice kid. She was like our age then, you yeah. know, like uh, whatever we were. And uh, I, oh, yeah, God. let's keep the numbers out of it. I saw him <laughs> discipline his kids on Long Island. Went over to his house and. You know, I think James had a little toy sword, a plastic sword, and he dropped it down on his sister. And Paul goes, you do that one more time, we're going to have a problem. So, oh. It's funny <laughs> to see, it's a funny see him as a hysterical. dad. Yeah, see him as a dad. So, I remember <laughs> they, love him. some comic said he had a bill. He was the first one with a billion dollars. And they go, uh, you know, if he lost his wallet in a cab and there was 500 million in it, he'd still have $500 million. Uh -huh. That was some comic joke. But do you remember when Farley's <laughs> brothers came to the show and McCartney was on that stupid story where Paul, Paul looked the same as Paul McCartney growing up, but he had a little bit of gray here. And so Farley's brothers were standing there with red cups. There was no security. So the music comes out of their dressing room, walks by the 8-H page desk, you know that, and they walk right into the show. Right, right. And they go, Paul McCartney, one minute till you're on live. And so you see he comes out with a bodyguard on the front and back and he walks out with his guitar and it's fucking Paul McCartney. I'm there with Farley's uh, idiot brothers and they're all drunk. And he comes around and they go, and one of them goes, hey, Paul. And he looks over and he goes, getting a little gray. And he goes, <laughs> and then I remember he, that, he walks out uh, and I go, are you an idiot? He goes, hey, he looked. And then he goes on the monitor and they're like 15 seconds and he looks in the monitor and he goes like this. He got in his head right oh before he went God. out. Oh, no. And you know, he's like, is my... And then, um, anyway. So, <laughs> I, I will say one of my proudest moments, because sometimes Adam and I would try to write together, or yeah. uh, we would all try to think of excuses to all be in the same sketch or whatever. Yes. And the, the one I like the best is the Gap Girls when we were um, in the... That was all David. In the mall, and then Farley says, lay off me, I'm starving. Oh, that is best. one of the funnest ones we ever did. Yeah, man. And Schneider was in it, and Sarah Gilbert was a host. Oh, yeah. And uh, we were all, uh, that was just the fun for me, because we would all just rehearse. So, you know, you write it, if it gets in, you laugh at read through, you laugh you know, when, when we talk about what who plays what parts and what we say, and then you you really add jokes. wrote all that stuff though. That I know, but then you. everyone adds jokes, whatever you want, and then we got to do it on. So you have to rehearse all week or once yeah, or twice. Yeah, to be and together. That, that's a good reason to hang out. Is yeah, to rehearse. Yeah, that was amazing. Does everyone know about the Gap Girls? Because there's a young yeah. audience. Okay, because there's some younger people yeah. here. Oh, it was know, just a man. sketch where. We all uh, worked at the Gap. We played girls, and it was <laughs> infuriating. To and everyone. how did you talk? Whatever. Oh, no. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my or, God. Like, so weren't you at the yeah. folding meeting? Yeah. And I went to the Gap and studied it, and they showed how they put a clipboard in the sweaters and pulled them out and fold them out. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Mesmerized. And then <laughs> they would actually, this is when you feel kind of like a big deal, because yeah. if you get a sketch on and you're just some doofus from Arizona, and it's like a dumb sketch about the Gap, and then when they bring the sketches written and it's put up on its feet, they bring in, they talked to the Gap and brought a whole section of the Gap over. So it, yeah. they had a security Beautiful. guard because it would cost so much. It was real pants, real sweaters. And it was just a chunk of the Gap they moved in and the Gap liked it because it was free advertising. Yeah. Even though we made them all look like morons. But <laughs> it was still free. really fun. And then yeah, uh, yeah. we all hung out there and uh, would practice in there, rehearse, whatever it's called. And uh, it was great. So we did a couple of those. We did Gapperty, where it was Jeopardy. It was oh, just yeah. a fun way for me, you, and Farley to be in sketches. Yeah. And uh, that was that what was, was really our names again. Uh, Say it again. What was our names? On, uh, on the Christy. Lucy. He was Cindy, and you might have been Lucy. Yeah. 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 And does anyone know? Something like that.
Uh, do you remember the one that, because a lot of times you don't really get to rock and roll with somebody in a sketch. So you and I had, Dogs. had a crazy sketch. When I came back to guest host. Dogs? We, no. When you play drums, what? Pepper Boy. Oh, well, that oh, was let's the talk about yeah. Pepper Boy. Yeah. So yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Go, that was I mean, incredible. That was like, you and I were peeking on the on the yeah. show chris farley was tim Meadows oh, was yes. yeah. farley crossed his let's, let's talk about that for a second that was steve corin start, started that's this, right wrote it wrote it so did that do it just two i i was kind of the he was my protege i was the mentor i was obsessed with how to do the pepper you the like huge pepper, pepper mill yeah. and and adam was kind of the the, the, the young, underling yeah, and yes. really eager and we oh, yeah. we it, i'll just set it up for a second we did it did well and read through yeah Pretty well in rehearsal, dress show, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. Steve Korn comes to me and tells me something you want to do. Uh, what was between it the, shows. Was it the, so at one point we had the I was gonna uh you were going crazy, you were so nervous. Remember I slapped you. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy, it's always threes. <laughs> and then <laughs> I right. headbutt you, right? <laughs> yeah, with the sound effects. So and, between dress and air, Steve Korn, the writer, comes in and says, Adam's gonna put the pepper shaker between his legs. So you're going to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we timed it great, but we really peaked on air. Yeah, that was I, amazing. That doesn't happen every time. We yeah. committed so hard. I mean, because yeah. Tim Meadows was sitting there and I was oh, doing the man. pepper. You like a pepper, huh? Oh, I mean, it man. became way, I don't know if it was sexual or something, but we were just on that another was, level. I, every, I'd say once a, uh, um, two weeks, uh, if I'm in a restaurant, a guy with the pepper thing will be like, fresh pepper. Like, All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do you remember what happened? Like Farley was always the best at breaking people because he yeah. could be explosively <laughs> funny. Do you remember his line and what he did on the I air? know what it is. Too. Yeah. We, were, we flew in from Tommy Boy yes. for just the show and then we had to fly back. Oh. And he goes, I have a line in Pepper Boy. <laughs> and didn't he have a big beard? He had a yeah, big he beard. looked ridiculous. He really hammed it up. He, he His said, line was, why, why thank, thank you, Pepper, pepper Boy, boy why, right? Thank you. He this said, is, I'm going to make you laugh. He goes, Etsy, I'm going to make you laugh out there. Before I think he, he said, over... He oh, goes, he taunted you? Yeah, said, before it started, he goes, Etsy, hey, I'm going to make you laugh out there. And I go, all right, all right. And then... <laughs> yeah. I think he leans back and goes, why, thank, thank you, you Pepper Boy. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen a human being transform <laughs> like that. I think he's he had like 12 chins and perfect burn. amount of pepper. But <laughs> huge beard for no reason. And Big, but he, and he screamed it for the air show. He did, yeah. yes. He so, crossed his eyes, too. If I Adam remember. starts to turn purple. That's the stage. I'm over here. Adam's yeah. turning toward me and trying not to go. Yeah, the yeah. sketch had gone so well that I stayed in character. Yeah, but I, was, but I was said, sturdy. I don't the break. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> of course. That's funny, man. <laughs> Don't yeah, you break. were the pro. You were the pro. The we funny thing is, say, as Farley wasn't even supposed to say it that loud, it made no sense. Well, He's supposed he, to go, why, thank you, Pepper. But when he goes, why, that? Oh, yeah. He, he lost his marbles. Yeah, there, well, yeah. he lost his mind. But that was that was an electric sketch for a restaurant man. sketch. And then Il Cantonori when we did that Well, you one. guys wrote Il Cantonori. That, was, that, that also was major. Was explosive. But uh, you, you, you would take the reins murder 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 yeah. then we'd have a little thing to do when we were like let's jump on the dana fucking thunder storm yeah. well i don't quite if you guys killed too you and schneider we came did. in we you're did good the, but we, yeah. you got them all ready that was an italian restaurant where every all the waiters are too sexual with christy alley and all yeah. the uh, all the women that come in they're like oh bellissima bellissima, yeah. bellissima. Yeah. yeah i start licking christy alley's face i'm supposed to lick her face really hard i remember in rehearsal i go is this okay and she goes oh yeah go for it whatever yes. you want to do bellissima <laughs> Oh, you like it? <laughs> but you guys were just, all, you know, Crusher. You and, you and Crusher. Schneider came in with yes. Schneider had no clothes on or something. What was I that? had no clothes on. That was the, <laughs> I was the guy back then. I could take my fucking shirt off and feel okay. Yeah. Now there's there's a reason the sweatshirt's on yeah. at all times. <laughs> he has but. another shirt in case that somehow falls off. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know yeah. what's another crusher was Lunch Ladyland and a great song. I called Sandler about a year ago. I go, yeah, yes, it's on my iPod and it came in and really? I go, this is a good song when he goes Sloppy Joe, Slap, Sloppy Joe, yeah. That was I go <laughs> the way you write it and it's actually funny and then you do a sketch and it's funny and then you hear it again. You go, that's actually a good song. Like I, you can. 
It's that always go, catchy songs that stick I sang with that. I sang that on my album before I sang it on Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah? Oh, you did it first I did, on the I did it first on the album, and, and Farley was at the taping of my album. And so when I'm singing <clears throat> on the album, I think I'm in Santa Barbara. Or I don't remember where I was. Just a cool club. I, I'm sorry I forgot the name of it, but it was a club. We were recording. Farley was in the crowd going nuts. And then you, he's, his crazy voice is so, when I'm going, slap it, oh, slap it, slap it, you hear Farley going, slap it, oh, like, you know that. <laughs> and he never even heard the song before. He just kind of said, all right, he's going to sing slap it, oh. Wow. Did it. Yeah, that was and a crush. What out, was that on, they're going to laugh at you, which was, they're, they're all going to laugh at you. Two yes. times platinum. That they're was a biggie. You're you. the last guy to really sell comedy albums, I think. I, I mean, know, my God. I don't know if there's, there's been some after, but with that back in the day, that was, you were on it. Yeah. Uh. Everybody was. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, buddy. The buddies. We did get. buddy, dude, buddy, dude. Yeah. Homie. <laughs> yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> what the hell happened to you was another one. Yes, 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 yes. Thank that you. That was where your real acidy humor came out on those albums. That was where I got to curse a lot for the first time, and, uh, and David cursed with me, and we all uh, we were so excited. It was like being on Saturday I, Night. I Live. just thought it was like jazz. I mean, I, I mean, the one about the announcer with the uh, the champion. You say the word the champion. champion. It's yeah. a golf announcer. Yeah, you yeah. do it. Yeah, you yeah. say the word champion the like 500 yeah. times. Go it's ahead. about a, a, a <laughs> golfer who um, has like a nine stroke lead and he's on the last hole and he keeps missing yeah. putts. And you're and the announcer. I'm the announcer going, the champion is, is feeling it today and uh, <laughs> he's about to set the course record and the champion. And then he, he putts it and you hear the crowd go, oh, and he goes, well, the champion laughs that off. <laughs> Eight stroke lead now, <laughs> if, you know, all that kind of shit, and then it gets more and more uh, just insane. Closer to being like uh, choking, and he's like, "Well, he's up three strokes. Hopefully, he can put this one in." And and then it's Blake Clark is doing Blake the Clark. voice of the champ. Oh, uh, Blake Blake champ, and he's going, "God fucking damn it!" <laughs> but, anyways, those albums were good because like they lay into the crowd of college kids in the summer and then you come back and you're even bigger on SNL because they're like playing them the, over and the over albums and were over. the big, biggest Smart. deal besides Saturday Night Live because like you said, I would go out on tour. The kid, kids who were coming to see me knew the album so they, they knew some of the songs Huge. they knew some yeah. of the characters and that definitely rela relaxed me on stage. Yeah. All of us, we used to have fun. Well, let, let's just say because you've given me a lot of props that by the time you you're after about two years in on SNL, you, you really were just like top notch. I mean, you yeah. were crushing consistently on that show. And the audience was falling in love with you because, yeah. you know, when you'd sing Hanukkah song, when oh, you yeah. would do your guitar or Thanksgiving yeah. song. Right, right. First yes. of all, you actually, you're, you're a really good acoustic player. Not bad. And you can hold a great melody. And then yeah. it's so silly and funny. And also watching you enjoy it. Not nah. breaking, but, but just the light in your eyes. Right, right. It's so infectious. It was you know? exciting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. I remember that. I remember singing that at the table, uh, the turkey song, the Thanksgiving song for like Smigel and a couple other writers at the table going, you know, singing it to them. And if they laughed, I was like, oh, fuck. Okay. They think it's You're funny. You're on to something. Yeah. It was a big deal. If those guys, the great writers on the show, when, when they would smile at what your idea was like jim downey if he said something was good you would just yeah. like even it if it didn't get on you were like all right yeah. i'm funny now yeah we had we had the a team there was yes. smuggle genius downey brilliant yes. you know yeah. we had some incredible Handy. writers yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Helping us when was your first teams. movie that was when we did uh, the summer we did tommy boy you did billy madison right yes yeah. yes and then and then the next summer uh happy gilmore happy gilmore and then and, and they those movies kept making it more than the other ones, so they give you another yeah. one, yeah. and then it was uh, wedding, wedding singer. singer was wedding singer, uh, yeah. And then, and then, then Waterboy. I think that Water was where it was Water the Water mic Boy. drop. At that point, you were a movie <laughs> yeah, star. Yeah, it was too big. When you do Happy, you did, of course, Billy Madison, but you do Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer, and Waterboy. Yeah. Within like twenty-four months or something. Then Big Daddy. Then Big Another Daddy. Another mega yeah. monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. have too many. I can't even. You too know, many. when Waterboy came out, I was hosting, and you were there that weekend. And we were going to do a bit in the monologue. And then you had to fly back. Waterboy was such a fucking... They told us, or they told you how much it made. And everyone was like, what the fuck? And then you... <laughs> 
<laughs> you had to get back, and I changed my monologue, and I just did stand up. I wasn't doing stand up in the monologue. You're kidding me. I was yeah. supposed to go out with you. Well, we we're going to do audience member, you know, when you oh, go, man. Oh, yes. Can I oh, do it? And you're going to ruin my monologue with questions. And then they go, Lauren goes, well, I, you know, you said you had to go. And I go, all right, well, what do I do? And he goes, stand up. Oh, really? <laughs> Aren't you a stand up? I go, well, I, I fucking never do it anymore. I go, tonight? So he goes, just throw some things together. I go, so you can't go practice or run to catch rising star. So I put uh, some together, but it's so fucking terrifying to do a monologue anyway. And then oh, yeah. out yeah. cordless Hosting's mic. hard. And then everyone's like. Well, that then, is the worst when you're doing stand up and you're about to go out and you look for the mic and then the, the guy makes the decision for you like. Don't, don't use a hand mic. Use this. And then you go, <laughs> and you don't have a fucking mic in your hand. You're like, holy shit, what do I do with both my hands? I go like this. Hey, hey. You know I know, what to we're do. not used to it. Yeah. You know? Or a mic stand. I lean on a mic stand sometimes. It's not there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, looking for a mic stand to lean on. It's right? just like drowning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you first start to stand up, you just hold the mic like this. Oh, God, you're and choking. Then, you know, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you man. go with Bill? Like, we. Uh, I'm sorry. I remember shooting Billy yeah. Madison, and you guys were shooting Tommy Boy and hanging out, with, hanging yeah. out dur- up in Toronto Yeah, together. we were in the same place, because we came over there, and that was the night when you... Remember when you did that thing called... There was like a crime scene uh, joke with everybody, where they go in a room, and you go walk in, and it's a crime oh, scene. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so... But, but, oh, yeah, but Adam's movie was called Billy Madison. Our movie was called Billy the Third. Yeah, it was Billy the Third. And so we changed it, and we just didn't have a... We didn't know what to call it. Of all things, we both have the same lead yeah. as the same name. Yeah. So we eventually changed ours, because the name of the movie was Billy the Third. But fucking hanging out in Toronto with you and Farley. Oh, that was great. We had a couple weeks together. What up, there. What it was up. Nice, I hate it, that. yeah. And uh-huh. then... Uh, oh yeah, so then you do all those movies that mm-hmm. seem to work out. You did for some you. movies. Uh, <laughs> by the way, my wife and I watched, oh, we watched Hustle, Hustle last night. What did you see? Hustle. Hustle. You saw Hustle. Loved Hustle. it. That, yeah, I Thank think you. it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah we have to talk about that. Hustle is a movie he's got coming out. I got a new movie, yes. It's yes. on Netflix, it's and Netflix. it's about, it's yeah. kind of like Hoosers yeah. meets Rocky meets yes. Moneyball. Yes, yes. And 100%. you're great in it. Thank you. I mean, you, really man. great. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, it, it's, a, it's, just a, thank it's a, it's just a really, it, you, you know, right? cool it really movie. works as a movie. I can't. I, mean, I, got, I got teary-eyed. Yeah, you got man. Me. That's yeah. so yeah. great, Dana. Well, I, I mean, I don't know how you. much we can give away. Adam's a uh, uh, basketball. Sports agent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were? A coach. I didn't like see a, it all. Like a, um, uh, like Adam a, works uh, at Magic Mountain. I watched it twice. I think a different movie. No, Adam, you're a... No, you're a, a scout. scout. Yeah, he's a scout, and then he's uh, wants I, to be I a coach. I discover a guy in Spain. I want to be a coach. I can't get on the staff, and I've been working for the Sixers for many years. And I find out, yeah, you like the Sixers? <laughs> I'm am nervous about Joel there. I hope Joel. everything's. I'm so. nervous. Uh, yeah, that is a good team though. But um, anyways, uh, I discover a guy in Spain, Juancho Hernan Gomez. He's just a, a he's an NBA player who never acted a day in his life. Yeah. And he's so fucking he's, good. It's he's crazy. so he was great. You really it. believe he's just from this little village yes. and really just has nothing going on. Beautiful jump shot. I knew it wasn't CGI. Yeah, you knew it was I mean, like, like amazing. Yeah. yeah. All you think is how many times you got to do every scene he makes every basket and you go, is he making all these fucking baskets? Because I've been on sets where they're like, going again. I'm like, <laughs> make it. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> But it's very hard to do that in all those yeah. scenes where it, it's pivotal. He has to make it yeah, in yeah. a crowd with a crowd behind him. And you got all these NBA players in yes, it. It's very it's, real. It's unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. He, oh, Heidi Gar- it? Is it Heidi Garner? Heidi's in it. Oh, yeah. He's got an Heidi SNL. Heidi Garner's uh, in it. She, uh, she oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Heidi Garner. She plays Robert yeah. She did a nice job. Daughter who uh, who uh, Robert Duvall owns in the movie, owns the Sixers. Yeah. And um, he has uh, Ben Foster's his son and Heidi Garner's his daughter. And they all... Work for the organization, and Heidi's yeah. excellent in it. Yeah, and she's great in it. And uh, Duvall must have been huge to be uh, in that the same movie. That was amazing hanging out that with Duvall. Must have been. What, what she was shot that the like? shit with Robert Duvall for. We, we were together three, four days. Did all our scenes together. We talked and talked yeah. and sat. I, I sat in a. He has a Rolls Royce in the movie. I fucking sat in the back of a Rolls Royce. Just talked about the Godfather. Talked about like in everything. between uh, setups. And, and it wasn't like. He just was 
cool. He was just well, talking about he's, everything, and and he's uh, he's ninety something years old, and he was just yeah. a sweetheart, and he was great, great, what great stories about action. James Con, and he just fucking knows everybody. See, everybody. that would just uh, you'd be you're a fly on the wall at that point. Yeah, he, yeah, 100%. and he's talking about The Godfather. You talking I mean, about The Godfather? Just yeah. saying the you first. You try name. not to ask him about it. You're like, <laughs> what other movies you do you liked? And he's like, <laughs> hey, yeah. Sonny. The Protection Squad, Sonny, they're going to help us. You always have that money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. all I got. Yeah. Well, yeah, that you was also, a big, he gives this, I think, because, you know, the movie, I don't want to give anything away, but it kind of goes roller coastery. but you have to get on the phone. And it was like very, like, great acting, solid scene where I was like, oh, my God, that must have been hard to do. But very, like a tearjerker. That was, there's a couple of mm. scenes like that in there yeah. that are really get you into the movie, into the movie, into the movie. And that guy was, uh, the basketball player was great. Actually, we remember I ran into you uh, golfing. Yeah, we played golf with yeah. Mancho. And you were with him. And yeah. you know, yeah, this guy's in the movie. And then uh, he was super cool then. He, he's such, he, uh, he's 6'9". Yeah. He's yeah. from Spain. His, him and his brother are, both are in the NBA. He plays for the Spanish national team. He was on, he's on the Utah Jazz now. And he just did it as a fucking joke because of the pandemic. They were like going around saying, we're looking for a basketball player. Adam Sandler's got some movie. LeBron wow. James is producing. And his sister said, why don't you do it just for fun? And he did it. He auditioned. We were like, geez, that guy's pretty damn good. Yeah, who, so who is good that? in it. It's amazing. And he that he's a, he's he a stud. did these scenes. Like when you have to do a real crying scene in a movie or something like that. I, I, I don't know about you, you cry a lot. I've seen that. But <laughs> but. In, <laughs> in real life, I don't cry that much. But on a movie yeah, every set, day when, at 10 a.m. When you have when you have to cry in a scene, you're just like, oh my god, how the fuck is that going to happen? And yeah, it, it, whatever. You work hard. This Wancho did like 10 setups of different angles, blah blah blah, and he was just bawling, crying, and saying his lines perfect. I'm like this, and he's a handsome fucking. Yeah, he's guy. good looking dude. I was trying not to say handsome, that, but he is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's handsome. so good looking. He can cry. He's he got cries. everything. He got, Actually, yeah. he's got it all. It's it's game over. It's six nine, crying handsome yeah. motherfucker. I, so I know. Six, I, ten and a half, actually. Ooh, Sobs like a baby every day. <laughs> I started Size angry. 13 feet. Dana, I will give you guys a tip. If you're ever in a movie and you have to cry and it's hard to, yeah. you fake it and then you go like this. Mm. And get glassy. That was the end of Tommy Boy. <laughs> He's obviously crying. That's good. Oh, it, you know, work. it does work. The it's only called problem. great acting. But Adam, let me, I'm going to ask <laughs> you a question. Yes. Do you feel like because, you know, you had Uncut Gems. That was pretty good, right? Yes. yes. Thank you, Dana. So then I then I saw that, and then I see this one. It seems like you're either, you're, I don't know, you're, and, and the murder mystery movie, with Jen, I mean, you're on, on a roll. I mean, are you feeling like <laughs> you're more comfortable acting since high now? Are you changing up stuff because you seem to be at this other level? Or is it just from doing uh, it so much? Uh, I think I'm getting older, more opportunities. Guys like the Safety Brothers. Yes. Uh, the Safety you- Brothers, who your your brother, he he kind of worked with them as help like, them get he, going. Help, yeah, help them get they going. They're great friends with Andy, and uh, I met them, God, 12 years ago. They were talking about Uncut Gems then. Uncut they were Gems. trying to get that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sort of the muse for Justin because <laughs> I met him 12 <laughs> years ago. Uncut Gems. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, but those guys are super cool. Yes. Very good. They're yeah, great. they did. I think they did a Kate Spade commercial that is Andy that wrote. how you guys met? Yeah, and I think a, a, Andy wrote an idea and they did it, and then it, it somehow went to the Cannes Film Festival, and mm-hmm. then they did a movie called I think Daddy Long Legs after that. Maybe. Yeah, an incredible. And movie. then they just kept getting. They were just better and better and better. And uh, yes. Did yours, and uh, you know, maybe one day you'll do another one with them. They're yes, fucking great gonna guys. make another one. They're writing another one right now, but I, I, I lucked out. I'm getting to do all this great stuff. Noah Bombeck, uh, PTA, yeah, they all hooked me up. They all wrote great stuff. They asked me to be in it. Um, Jim Brooks, Paul Thomas, yeah, I, I, yeah, I lucked yeah, out. yeah, Paul Thomas, and Anderson. then you just get more relaxed over time, right. <laughs> You get or more in the pocket, or you get. I, I guess I'm getting, I just did a movie with uh Johan Rank and he did uh Chernobyl, he did the oh, series, the Chernobyl. series brilliant. Yeah, and he's yeah. incredible. And I played an astronaut in it, and the guy is fucking crazy in the movie and going through a lot of 
pain and then and i went yeah just fucking do it and go and try your hardest so that's all i do i try my best and, yeah. and the ones that don't work they go all right we got to cut around that but um <laughs> <laughs> but I try yeah. to try to get as good as I can, and they they make it work. Is it ever scary because these guys do great movies or great TV show? And PTA, obviously, uh, one of Paul the best. Paul Thomas uh, Anderson, one of the best ever. <laughs> yes, yes, and then, I, but is. you know PTA a little bit. But if you get lucky enough, you know you're you're, you're paired up with some great director, and, and usually on sets like Grown Ups, those kind of movies, you have more of a say. Yeah. But if you, you have to kind of keep quiet, somewhat, not totally, but. Yeah. And trust them. And do you ever get a feeling where you're like, I don't even know if this guy knows what the fuck's going on. I mean, that must be scary. These guys. Because they're so good, but you go, it's, it's going to work. It's, they know what they're doing. That must be hard. You though. just go. You just give yourself to them because you know they're great. And, uh, and you read the script and you, you just don't want to let them down. And you jump in uh, their world. And it is neat. It's neat. Not, not, I always feel more comfortable doing comedy. I'm always... Uh, more at ease going, all yeah. right, we're going to go make a movie and have a great time and try to come up with the best jokes and make everybody laugh. Yeah. Love that. I'll love that the rest of my life, just like you guys. We're addicted to that. But the other stuff I'm getting to do, uh, it's awesome. I know you both would crush at that also. It's just, it's just, it's, it's just different. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's a different day in the trailer. You don't go, what the fuck? Uh, you know, let me come up with a joke. You're kind of sitting there going, oh, I got to get in this uh, mood right well, now. Well, the jokes are kind of crutchy because you know how to do it. And, you know, yeah. if you have a scene that's not working, you go, I think we can figure a way out of this if we think of a joke or way out, which is what you do a lot on a comedy. But in these, you're like, this is just connecting. It's part of connecting the dots of the bigger picture. So mm -hmm. not a lot has to happen right here. And it's hard to trust that. That's so true. Just do what it is. They'll figure, I mean, sometimes they add music or something and you go, oh, I see what they did. It's perfect. But yeah, that's true. You don't man. know when you're doing it. And then when you're doing it and it's not right, those guys tell you, whoa, 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 whoa. And you go, oh, <laughs> and you feel stupid for a second. You go, oh, I was, I was giving you a little extra. And they're like, calm down, calm yeah, down. Juice I'll it up a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> Making it real good for the people. And they go, no, no, no. Yeah, right. yeah. Believe that, me, they want to see. Those right? are the brothers, right? The the safety brothers, yeah, their safety brothers, brothers, and, and Uncut uh, gems. Ronnie, uh, Dana. What else do you have for Adam? We got to take a few questions. Oh, we don't keep, I don't know. I, I do think it's kind of cool that you did. There's so many movies. Obviously, uh, we talked to Drew Barrymore about yes. fifty first dates. I heard dates. that. That was, was sweet. Really sweet. Yeah. Drew was great. Drew gave you answers that were incredible every time. Doesn't Drew automatically? Take even a half a question, and she fucking goes. And she's poetically does a seven-minute yeah, answer. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Beginning, middle, she and was, end of every story. She goes, I'm going to guess your next three questions, and here's the answers. <laughs> um, when I went to SNL, we were yeah. like, okay. Made it easier. Just that was amazing, like, her talking about being a little kid on SNL. Oh, I know. Yeah, at age seven. By the way, I've listened to, I think, Every episode of your show. You have? Man. I fucking love this show. It's the best. Yeah. Jeez, so, I'm so happy for both of you. It's the greatest. Well, it's fun to do because, you know, like we don't get to hang out with our friends that much. So <laughs> this know. is our chance to, know, right. you know. Uh, the other one I wanted to ask you, did anger manage? So you got to work with Jack Nicholson. Yes. Unreal. And, and was, really got to know him. Yes. And you, you told a funny story about peanut butter just hanging out at his house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, man. My first day over uh, Nicholson's, uh, we, I got there and we're in, and he keeps the house dim. And so I'm sitting in this chair and Jack's sitting in this chair. We're facing each other about five feet away from each other and we're talking and shit. And, uh, it's, and I, I'm going, it's d dark enough that I'm going in my head. This, I don't think this is Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I, I think like they brought out a, f a fake one to talk to me and see if I'm okay to talk to the real one. Yeah. So I'm just going like this. And he's like talking quietly. And it doesn't sound like the impression everybody does, you know, or whatever. Hey, man, let me tell you something. It's not like that. It's kind of like. Yeah, man, it's kind of quiet and cool, and <laughs> little saying, man, let me. I don't know. He just has a cooler voice, but I, I was not really believing it was him. And then uh, I do like an hour of that, and then at the uh, at the end of it, he goes, "You hungry or something like that?" I said, oh, "Yeah, yeah, I could eat." He goes, "You want a sandwich?" <laughs> and I said, "I said, yeah, yeah, that sounds great, man." And he's like. P, B, and J. 
And I go, that's fucking great. And then he gets up and walks away. And then he turns around, he looks at me, and he goes, Skippy or Jiff? That sounds like... I thought also that you went outside for a minute. Oh, yeah. Well, and you were outside. He came out and he held up the jars. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Said Skippy or Jeff. <laughs> that's this right, such man. a funny image. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah. I, I remember Good. your stories. Yeah, that was you're a very than me, man. I ran into him with Lauren, of, of course, with Lauren. And uh, and uh, we had dinner and, and he goes... And, and he's come... There's an empty seat. You know, is this stupid? No, no, no. Okay. Oh. So... Lauren and Lauren goes, uh, we're gonna have some spaghetti. And uh <laughs> and, and uh I was with Rosie, she's over there, I was over here. There's, there's, there's an empty seat. And <laughs> and Lauren sits here. So there's an empty seat, and Jack sits next to Rosie and he starts talking, and then he goes, One time uh I went to the MTV Awards or something, or something he goes, I ran out and it was so dark I got in the wrong limo and I sat down and uh everyone just stared at me and it was Nirvana. Uh-huh. And he goes, hmm. and he goes, we're just, and, and we're in the wrong limo. I go, uh oh. And then she goes, did they know who you, did they not know who you were? And he goes, well, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't know who he was. Could I tell you, Quentin Nicholson one? Yeah. yeah. Related to SNL. So Phil Hartman and John Lovitz and I are playing the par three in Studio City. Uh-huh. So, w- what's it? Yeah, oh. wins it. So yeah. we're on the green. We wave the guy on, and uh, he shoots it out of bounds, and he walks over. We realize it's Nicholson. <laughs> right, right, you know? right. So he walks up, and Phil Hartman had dubbed his voice in the movie The Border because they couldn't get a hold of Nicholson. And he wow. feels very respectful, and he goes, Mr. Nicholson, I dubbed your voice in the movie The Border. He, one beat, and he goes, no wonder it was my only stinker. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. As a joke. Staker. All right, let's take some questions real quick. We'll get Adam out of here. Uh, uh, By the way, just so you know, before Nicholson uh, did anger management, he called Lorne. He called Lorne to see if it, it was. He had Lorne read the script. Oh, really? He goes, I just just got to make sure. See if it was funny or something. Yeah, he goes, I oh, like really? it. It makes me laugh. And let me just. Oh, let that's Lorne. cool. And he goes, he is the man. And Lorne I skimmed read. it. He, he, yeah, he went through it and gave, gave it the blessing. So I owe Lauren for that, too. We owe Lauren a lot. Yes. Yeah. And Lauren, you appreciate Lauren more and more every year you're away from the yes. show. What yeah. he has to deal with, the egos, the politics, keeping the sensibility in yeah. a certain frequency. Because if yeah. he left, it could turn into hee-haw in a second. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> you're he right. likes smart. He, he likes yes. big laughs. So there's yeah. a lot, a lot of respect for That's Lauren Michaels. very true. Yeah. All right. How are we going to do Q&A? How do we do it? Oh, they line up over there? Okay, line up with him if anybody has a question. We'll do a couple, and then we'll get this. uh, Greg Holtzman. We'll get you guys to the other 300 shows tonight. All right, here we go. Hi there. (laughs) Oh, we're starting. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, young man. Hey, Hey, buddy. Uh, So I was wondering, you were talking about, uh, like, childhood things that you remember. What was the first, like, extravagant purchase you made when you sort of made it big? That's good a question. question. That's a good one. I, I got my leather jacket that you remember. <laughs> the black leather I got jacket. a Police Academy movie and I bought a $400 leather jacket that was too heavy, but I couldn't give it up. It was like a motorcycle one and it hurt my neck, but I wanted to wear it. <laughs> and then I think I wore the improv when I first I was around Adam. And the first thing you ever said to me was, can you unzipper me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me get it off and I have to lay down now? That was it. Mine was leather jacket. Dana, what do you got? What'd you get? With my own money that I bought. I think I bought. I went out. My father had a, a green, dark green and light green 78 Cadillac Fleetwood or some shit when I was wow. in high school. And I, my first big move, I went out to an old Cadillac place. They didn't have that color, but I got that same caddy. And had them painted that color. That was like my big first move. That's cool. That's big better. rich boy. How about you, can ben? I change mine? <laughs> <laughs> you must have got more than the leather jacket based on your home sales recently. <laughs> 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 Sorry, so he did well. David invested well. Yes. What was your? What'd you get? Uh, my wife and I did a silly thing. We walked in Encino. We walked into a Mercedes dealership and we bought. Mercedes cars, like hundred thousand dollar cars. That's, I bought a convertible coupe and I drove it for like a week and it had a plastic windshield. I'm like, what the fuck? I, so I got I 
put, took it back and got a sedan. That was just during my German phase. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you I, had a I have a Volvo now. It's very oh, yeah. non-sexy. What a loser. Go ahead. Next one. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the origins of your trademark, you know, Adam Sandler voice, but you kind of already answered that. Yeah. But so my next question is, um, do your daughters do like an Adam Sandler impression? Like, they, do they like, go like, they're all going to laugh at you or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that. They don't know that album yet, but um, they do both do the, uh, you, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, they see them do that. They, yeah. see, they do that. That's it. Every time I'm trying to be funny and it, and it doesn't work. They go, <laughs> 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 That's funny. Yes, that. Thank you. Thanks, man. Sorry, I'm I'm shorter. Hi, hi guys. Hi. Big hi. fan. My name hey. is Shalise. I'm from Houston. Nice um, to see you, buddy. So my question is, um, what out of all the films you guys have, if you guys can go back and do a sequel to any of y'all's previous films, what would it be? Uh, shit. Wayne, Wayne's, yeah. World Wayne's, Garth, Wayne's World 3. Wayne's Garth. Wayne's World 3. Garth at 60. Garth Wayne. <laughs> I gotta get some Flow Max. Yeah, <laughs> Flow Max. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would work. Go ahead, Adam. We've what, done so many movies. What, what would you, be the you, sequel? What would you. What was the. I can't think of the name right now. With the, You did with the Cage and Lovitz. Oh, Trapped in Paradise. Oh, Trapped yeah. in Paradise. Yeah. That'd be fun to just work with Nicholas Cage. That was yeah. a tough shoot, wasn't We it? fell down in the snow, and yeah, we just... You were doing Brad Gray in that, right? I was doing Brad Gray and, yeah. and Mickey Rourke. I don't know what you're doing, but I wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah. I was doing Mickey Rourke. The studio flew in from L.A. We were in the middle of the woods in Canada and said, you got to stop doing that. Really? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But Nicholas Cage said, I would do it anyway. <laughs> he was a great character. I guess that's it, right? I don't what know. would you do yeah. a sequel to? You have, you have so many movies. No idea. I, 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 too I many. liked them all. I liked doing Grown Ups with Davey because we all hung out. We, all, we had yeah, that was a great time. one. Those grown Ups could, could work. Yeah, three. Grown up, yeah, three. Well, whatever, whatever it is, I like to do it with, uh, it's always great when you're with your friends. Grown ups, we, we literally got to do this every day. That was a Sit funnest. in chairs, hang out, try to be funny, and, uh, and cut around it. Yeah, that thing's been keeping the lights on at TBS for the last seven years. <laughs> and it's on in heavy rotation. Yeah, that's But I true. love it. I loved Grown Ups. That was, oh, that that was, was great, smash. great memories. Yeah. Thank smash. you for that question. Thank you. Uh, cheers. You guys are wonderful. This is amazing. Thank you. Uh, hey, man. I, my question, I suppose you guys have written for so many different, like, wonderful projects in both film and TV and, of course, on Saturday Night Live. And my question was, um, do you think that to properly, like, kind of, well, like, master that sort of craft, do you think it's, like, writing as much as you can, like, every day is really the proper way to get to a point where you feel comfortable with your writing? That's or do you good. think also, I suppose, uh, do you think it's also helpful to like try and collaborate with mm -hmm. other people that you know you'd work well with? Or mm -hmm. something Sounds like a that? little like John Mulaney, this guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would say, my, my, if I would take that, uh, I, my first answer would be, if it's stand up, just get as much stage time as, time, uh, as you can. And uh, if it's writing, I think it's just more is better collaborating or writing by yourself. Just anything you can do until something sticks, I would say. Writing, writing, right? I remember I lived with Apatow when I was young. Judd, great yeah. writer. And Apatow, he was the first one of us that would write. Yeah, he was he smart about it. He used to sit in his room and write skits all the time for, for Saturday. He wasn't on Saturday Night Live, but he would write kind of skits. And he would collaborate them. with people and he was smart. He made himself like a producer because that was a valuable thing to help someone do what they're doing, Jim Carrey or you. Right, or right, right. Well, I would smart. say, what is your name? Uh, my name is Ambrose. Okay. All right, Ambrose. That's all right. It's a cool no, name. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great Chardonnay. No, anyway. <laughs> Ambrose, I would just say initially that seems like too much pressure to me to try to go in a room and stuff. If you're a comedy writer, just write everything down. That's what George Carlin said. So if you're out with your friends, a lot of times just taking a walk or going to a movie, someone will say something. Make sure you either record it or write it down and just do it spontaneously all the time. And your headset gets into yeah, that. Yeah, it's hard to just sit and write and be funny. It happens all day. And if you just write it when it happens and don't say you'll remember it later because you won't. 
So just write it, write it, write it. And then you collect it and go, is there anything here? Is there anything here? That right. stuff's very valuable. You basically you know? only need to write five good jokes your whole life. And then like David, you use that the rest of your life. <laughs> in, different, in different ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a spade roast. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Good luck, Thank you, Bros. All right. What do we got, I'm boss? Bros. I'm Bros. Hi. Um, <laughs> I have a favor to ask you guys. It's my nephew's 15th birthday. No. And I was <laughs> <laughs> it was my nephew's 15th birthday today, and I was wondering if I could make a video of you guys saying happy birthday to him. Imagine if we said no one meant it. Yeah. Right now. You know, you know when you to ask. Take your yeah. No, it's fine. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. What's his name? What's Roll his name? It. Nicholas. Nicholas. And we're gonna say. Do you want us to film it and then send it to the whole theater? Sings Happy Birthday to Nicholas. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nicholas. And it's my niece. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Hey there, guys. My name is Holy Shit. It's testosterone, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My name is Al, and I want to say that it's um, my grandma's dying, and it's her birthday day. And if we could sing happy birthday to her, (laughs) that would be incredible. What has changed? What's her name? No, but for real, uh, this is such a fucking treat. That's a good luck. <laughs> this is such a fucking treat for all of us because you guys are Thank all just you. such pillars of comedy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You too, David. Thank you. <laughs> He's rolling. <laughs> Here, here's my real question. So, yeah. uh, how, how you, you know, as, as when you're watching you guys, we pretend we're you. We see ourselves in you and shit like that. So when you did Mixed Nuts with Steve Martin. Yeah. And then when you did that scene with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, yeah. Being you in those moments is like fucking incredible. So how was it being you in those moments? Yeah. It was that's some very good, cool. good co-stars. Yeah, two. They, you're funny as shit, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good job. I'll be here tomorrow night. <laughs> My name's Al Monero. Monero, you're Al Monero. You got a great name for a comedian. God, you you're so psyched. You followed Ambrose too. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's gonna take it down. <laughs> Ambrose is looking for pen and paper. You what, David, did you tune out? <laughs> David tuned out. So, uh, uh, Steve Martin, of course, all our heroes. Yeah, we love one of him. The greats of all uh, time. All the time. All yeah, all the, uh, first time Hall of Famer, Steve Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the number one uh, ballad for us, right? Say it again. He was probably the oh, yeah. number one guy. He memorized as, his albums. His albums, Wild and Crazy yep. Guy, all, 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 all the shit Steve Martin did. So, of course, being in a movie with him with him was just staring at him and <laughs> waiting for, like, quiet moments to run over and say something. And if hopefully he'd respond. And uh, so I loved that. And he was very nice mm-hmm. to me. And then uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Fucking yeah. great Genius guy. Great, actor. great tour de force, that guy. He came... He was just a very good, funny man. Took it serious. Went went hardcore, and when we worked together. By the way, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I don't know if you guys know this. So we're doing Billy Madison. I think we wrote. Oh no, that Happy Gilmore. No, maybe Billy Madison. We wrote for Bob Odenkirk. Oh, wrote sure. that for Bob Odenkirk, the bad guy in the movie. Uh, and the fucking studio wouldn't allow it. They're like, you can't just have your friends. And we were like, no, he's fucking great. And, and they said, no. And <laughs> it's Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk, Odenkirk. he was a writer of SNL. So I think that's how, how it went. I think it's that. Mm. Okay, so we wanted Bob. They said no. They put out, uh, uh, you got to audition, you know, audition people. Philip Seymour Hoffman auditioned. And I was in Toronto getting ready to make the movie and it still wasn't cast yet. I saw Philip Seymour Hoffman. I was laughing my ass off. I'm going, who the fuck is this guy? He's hilarious. So I tell the uh, people, I show Universal, can we have this guy? Are you good with him? I mean, I mean, you fucking said no to Odenkirk. Are we okay with this guy? 
And they were like, and it took some talking into it. And then they said, yes. Then we offered it to him. And we get this call back like, he, yeah, he's not, he doesn't want to do it. And we were like, he doesn't want to do it. What do you mean? He auditioned. And so I go, let me fucking talk to him, this guy, and tell him how great he is. And I called him up. And I said, hey, it's Adam. And he's like, oh, hey, Adam, blah, blah, blah. And I said, hey, man, I saw your tape. You're so f great, buddy. And they said, you don't want to do it. And he goes, oh, thanks, man. I go, do you, do you want to do it? Or, or, and he goes, oh, I can't. I go, oh, why not? He goes, oh, I just don't want to. <laughs> and I go, oh, OK. Wow. You That's sure? We're going to have a great answer. answer. Isn't that great? I don't want to. I go, I really love you. And he goes, I know you do. <laughs> I swear to God. I go, wow. All right, a lot man. of confidence. Yeah, yeah. I'd like awesome. to have, that was Good cool. job. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank hey, you. when you get bored and you want to go to YouTube, go to Crypto Junkies Easy. I'll make you rich. <laughs> All yeah, right. Hang on to that place. Cardenio and get Doge that coin, brother. That Solana. Guy. It's going right. on the moon. He's a funny go bastard. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Denny. Uh, Hi. Just hey. want to. Just want to thank you guys. You guys are my comedy heroes. Moved out to LA for my pursuit of SNL uh, right. as my dream. So I've been looking up to you guys my whole life. Oh, that's uh, sweet. Welcome. Yeah, are, you doing, are you doing stand up and stuff like that? All over, all over. Where North Hollywood, I produce a show. And no way. Oh, really? What's yeah. your name? Denny Glasser. Denny Glasser. That's okay. a great name. It's, it's, it, it, is it's, it a, I'm going to pass out. Thank I'm, you. Yeah. Denny, Denny, is that a person with this or not? Dr. Dr. Denny would be a good moniker. <laughs> One Dr. Day, Denny's it, in the house. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank Go you. Uh, my only question I wanted to uh, ask is, what was the first impression or character that you guys did that you knew you could do this for a career? Oh, I could do Michael J. Fox real good. <laughs> no, David, that was David. That was David. Always oh, yours. My first impression as a kid. You didn't do many kid, impressions, did you? I did. No, I used to do them around the house. I did the basic. I used to do uh, Rich Little stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, me John, too. John yeah. Wayne and. Uh, John Wayne. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I used to wear a cowboy hat around the house. <laughs> oh, really? House. Well, I'll oh say, my yeah. God. I would do that like oh I would my God. cook for my parents. Oh, watch bacon and eggs. Oh, gross. Yeah, I know. I know. So, <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? Who was your first? Um, Casey Kasem? Yeah. You guys do that. Checking in at number five, the boss. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, a man and his guitar. A man who likes to call his guitar his own. Uh, I was nine years old. The Beatles came on Ed Sullivan. The next day, I, was, I walked up to my mom and I said, Hey, do you think I could get me some pancakes? <laughs> she screamed. Oh, she didn't know what I was doing. But that was my first time I knew I could alter my voice is doing a Liverpudlian accent. All right, well, good luck to you, buddy. Thank yeah, you for you. asking me. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you, buddy. Denny. I think luck. that's it, Denny. We got to go. We got to go. I don't Thank know you very much. Thanks, Thanks Adam Sandler. Thank you. Love Give you all. Thanks for your questions. Thank you, questions. Thank you guys. You guys you, were awesome. And thank, thank you, you so much out. for coming out yeah. to the World Turn. Adam Bye. Sandler. Take care. Bye, folks. Thanks, Dana. Really enjoyed it. How you doing? That was fun. Thank you so much. All right. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Production and engineering led by Greg Holtzman, Richard Cook, Serena Regan, and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. <laughs>